Hey guys, thanks for stepping by Wraith Sister Lesson today. We're looking at these Tier 7 British Medium Tank, the Comet. And this was actually designated the A34, the Tank Cruiser Comet 1. It was designed and put to use during the end of the Second World War and was designed as an improvement on the Cromwell Tank, mounting the new 77mm high velocity gun in a lower profile, lower profile turret, lower profile chassis. It was very effective against the late war German tanks like the Panther and most ranges of the Tigers. It was widely respected as being the best tank of World War II that the British produced. And then also determined that when firing the arm piercing Sabu type rounds that they used in World War II it was actually better than the German 75mm KWK 42 which was used on the Panther. And it also remained in service as, as a British tank until 1558 and continued on to some other countries into the 1980s. So, based on actions that happened in North Africa and a, the tank on tank battles that happened there with against the Germans, they decided they needed something better uh, that's going to hold up. So, they started with uh, the Mark, the A30 cruiser, which was the Mark 8 Challenger. And it was based on the Cromwell, so the chassis was lengthened, the turret was a little bigger. Then they also went on to kind of modify a Sherman and put a 17 pound gun on a Sherman called the Sherman Firefly. Now, the Challenger and the Sherman, and the Sherman Firefly both used the same 17 pound gun, uh, but because of the way they operated, they were pretty easy targets for the Germans. And they ended up trying to deploy these things just because they didn't have enough. Uh, for basically, it was a unit of three Cromwells and either a Sherman or a Challenger and that's just not you know too many tank types makes maintenance difficult replacement parts hard to get so what they ended up doing was actually deciding they need to start not over but just start with a reader a fresh design something new so it's still kind of based on the Cromwell and they wanted to really focus on the the strengths of the Cromwell which was the speed the low height and the mobility, and they wanted to replace the Challenger and also the the Firefly. So a low profile, low profile turret was welded, and they used a cast gun mantlet for the 77 mm gun, which was electronics to first, which is something they liked from the uh, Churchill series, as opposed to hydraulic route traversed to give it a little better speed. The 77 mm gun uses the same projectile as the 17 pounders. Uh, the, the case was different, but the ammunition was more compact, a little smaller, and easier to handle by the crew inside the confines of the tank. And it was given a top speed of 40, uh, 30, 32 kilometers an hour, or, sorry, 32 miles per hour, 51 kilometers per hour. Now, the reason why they did this was because the meteor engine on this was so high powered, crews had a habit of throwing tracks and turning up the engine while they were doing high speed maneuvers, so they wanted to reduce the chance of this happening in combat so they put a limiter on the engine the engine is probably capable of doing quite close to 60 to 65 kilometers an hour and they didn't want the crews to be wild and crazy and take more tanks out of service than they needed to be uh, the british 11th armored division was the only unit to actually be fully completely integrated and use the comet during the war it kind of didn't see any big combats a lot of small combats it was important to push across the rhine and did participate in the victory of parade in berlin and following the war, it did take place in Korea. It was actually part of the Korean conflict. Um, and was there, if you remember, the Centurions also finally made their big show there. So these two tanks fought alongside with each other. But shortly after that, the uh, Comets were re removed from frontline service for the British and later sold out or scrapped away. And there's still a few examples floating around the world, and there's a couple that run. And so what does that do for wargaming? Well, speed limit's the same. Wargaming is given at the same 51 kilometers per hour speed limit, which is good. Got a traverse speed of 30 degrees a second and a turret speed of 46 degrees a second, making this a very light, very nimble kind of medium tank. Um, the armor, 76 in the front hull, 43 on the side, 32 on the rear. So that's not going to impress anybody, not going to do too much. Against lighter tanks, lower tier tanks, you may bounce some shots off the hull. But anything tier 7 or above, you don't want to expose that hull at all if you can avoid it. The turret has 111 on the front, 63 on the 5, 57 on the rear. The turret's actually pretty bouncy and does pretty well. Um, average damage 140, average pens 148 millimeters, rate of fire 15, a little 15 rounds a minute. It's a pretty good tank. And the view range is 380. 
So all in all, this is a very good medium tank, and it actually tr covered very well from real life to war gaming version. Uh, it was a very good mix and blend of the two. Um, so real quick look at the final stats. 2k damage, 3 kills, 1300 base XP. I had kind of a short week, odd week, so I didn't get as much done as I wanted to get done. So hopefully next time I'll give you guys something a little more in depth. As always, guys, thanks for stopping by the channel and being a part of Race History Lessons. Any suggestions you want to see, put them below. And as always, keep your powder dry.